my dear friends, um, from wherever you are joining us for this Mass, we are offering this Mass of Tuesday, the fifth week of Lent. And in this Mass, we are praying for all of you. This Mass is dedicated for you and your families as you weather this very horrible, horrible virus. And our prayers are that God's protection may always be and abide with you and that the mantle of our Blessed Mother may shield and cover you and protect you and that the blood of Jesus may be the balm that covers every one of you wherever you are at this time. We ask the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel to fight with us against this enemy and we pray that God may be with our doctors, our nurses, our EMS workers, um, people who work in the lab, and everyone who is dedicating himself or herself and risking their lives for the healing and safety of our people, that God may bless them. We pray for our police, pray for our military. May God watch over and keep them safe. And for those who are sick right now, we ask for God's healing. We pray for our leaders. We pray that God may continue to guide them that they may listen to God's, to God's word, guiding them to bring out the best in our society at this time for the protection of God's people. We pray for medical researchers, that God may speed this process and help us find either a cure or a vaccine to prevent this disease. We pray for each other that we may do whatever mm -hmm. it takes to protect ourselves and to protect people we interact with every day. We're going to begin this Mass by singing the beautiful song, Amazing Grace. May this amazing grace find you wherever you are. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, towards grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious deep the grace appeared the hour I first In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, this Mass, as I said at the beginning, is offered for all of you. May God watch over and protect you. Let us go to God with our sins. Let us go to God with the failings of our world, and ask his mercy and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you continually plead our cause before the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your voice is forever heeded by the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your presence never leaves us because your name forever is Emmanuel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow both in merit and in number. Be with all those who are sick, O God. Be with those who care for them. Be with those who have died. 
May each and every one of us receive the grace that is consistent with the needs of our hearts and our lives at this time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount O, the children of Israel set out to the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out, of, out from Egypt? to die in this desert where there, where there is no food or water. We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people set of serpents which beat the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord our God and against you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole. And whoever looks at it after being beaten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone had been beaten by a serpent, looked at the bronze serpent. He lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call and summon speedily. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O oh Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebelled Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come. And let these future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down with his lowly height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The seed of the word of God, the seed is the word of God. Christ is a soul. All who come to him will live forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I'm going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sins. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said to Jesus, The Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, you see, because he said, Where I'm going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world. But I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have more to say to you about say, say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him, I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, 
then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing of my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I, am, I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke like this, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I would like to reflect with you this afternoon from the readings. But before I go into these readings, I wanted to take a few moments to, to empathize and to reach out to any one of you, wherever you are. A few days ago, I, talk, I talked about how our lives have changed and are changing every day. More and more, I'm beginning to appreciate um, little things that I took for granted for a long time. Like just having a handshake. Like having someone hug you. Like walking close enough and standing close enough to someone and speaking without having to yell or scream or, or shout aloud. It, it, it is little things like this. Or like just having mass with your congregation, singing and doing all the other things. And having your sacristan set up things and do things. These are all little things. And I am thinking about how your own lives too have changed. And at moments like this, our anxiety can grow and create, you know, other layers of anxiety, not just for ourselves, but for people around us. We all cope with stress differently. And maybe someone in your family is struggling right now. Either they are doing stuff that you just can't, can't tolerate. They offend you by almost everything they do. That's exactly what the devil wants us to do at this time. See, scripture says the devil is a thief. His job is to come, steal, kill, and destroy. That's what this is about. We are under some attack. Yeah, granted, this is a physical attack. It's a virus. But it does have a spiritual principle component to it. That we as Christian believers and as believers everywhere must remain aware of. The devil is fighting hard. And I also learned, I said, when the devil is fighting this hard, God must have an outstanding and awesome plan. That's why he is working so hard. But we must make sure that the enemy doesn't win. That this virus doesn't win. That the, 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 the devil doesn't win. But if we, you know, allow each other to get on each other's nerves and drive us crazy. Yes, someone is winning. Definitely not you, not me. But the enemy is winning and this virus is winning. Now, generally, when I was growing up, they also said when people are born together and stay together, they are stronger than their strongest. Now, what this, this virus has succeeded in doing is to make sure we maintain as much distance from each other as possible. Now that's safe because that's the only way to avoid spreading this virus. But though we are separated by physical distance, we must stay together by in spiritual distance. We must make sure we close those bonds and close those gaps. Because the devil knows that there is power in common agreement and in togetherness. So this disease also has another component of distancing. Because if, if the enemy wants to destroy you, the only way to do it is to isolate. Yes, I agree. This has a spiritual component to it. It's a physical disease, but it does have some spiritual component. And we as believers, as God's children, must remain aware of what the devil is planning to do. What the enemy has in his target. So I encourage you. Don't let the devil turn you against yourself, against what you are dealing with right now, against the little things that have happened in your lives right now. You must stay focused until this fight is over. We must win this fight, but we must win on account 
of making sure the enemy is not winning. Not one battle, not the war. I, I also learned that deprivation sometimes isn't just a bad thing, but it makes us begin to appreciate the things we have or the things we have and the things we have missed. Now, I am beginning to appreciate more and more the people that I, I, I always will gather for mass with. Begin to appreciate just ability to go out and do the things you want to do. These were all little things I took for granted. Being able to walk in and visit with somebody. So little things are suddenly beginning to make sense. Wow, I didn't realize how valuable and how important things around me were. Until now, I am deprived of the right to have them. And, and sometimes that's the lesson that we can also take from here. But while we're taking all of these lessons, we must stay focused on what is happening and don't be distracted. The Lord Jesus said, says be vigilant at all times. Be vigilant at all times. And St. Peter captured that very well. Says for us to be vigilant at all times because the enemy is prowling like a roaring lion looking for victims, soft targets to hit. We, we must not be those soft targets for the enemy. We must stay. And as you, we hear from this reading today, the first reading is taken from the book of Numbers. It tells us who, what our weapon is. Our weapon is Jesus and the cross of Christ. That's our weapon of victory. You, you hear how when serpents, God sends serpents to, be, to, to buy Israel's children because of their disobedience. God also ordered Moses, says, this is what you must do. Make a bronze, a bronze serpent on a pole and set it up. And if anyone is beaten and looks to it, they would leave. And Moses did that. And all those who were beaten lived because they looked to the serpent. That serpent represented Christ who was going to be raised up on the cross many, many, many thousand years later. And so, Jesus made reference to this. He said the Son of Man will be, just as Moses did in the wilderness, so will the Son of Man be raised up on the cross. And all those who looked to that cross and believed and professed faith in Jesus Christ, they lived. And Jesus himself said, as I live through the Father, you will live by me. So while we are going through this spectacle, we're almost like hunted down by this virus or by this disease, we do have a weapon. And very soon, that weapon will be lifted up in the Eucharist. And wherever you are, I hope that you are able to just throw yourself into the cup of Christ's suffering and into this Eucharist of our salvation and draw grace and strength for this fight against the enemy. And I pray that wherever you are, you may find the blessing of God present to you, revealing to you that you are not alone in this valley, that God is in that deep valley with you, and he will bring you up when all of this is over. May, may God who has allowed us to face this battle, remind us every day that he is fighting on our side, and we are on a winning team because Jesus is the champion of our team. He is the captain of that team. And you are blessed to have him as a leader, as a captain of that team. Let us now lift our hearts and our minds in prayer and ask that God may help us stay close enough to the leader, knowing that victory with him is guaranteed. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Let us now pray. Most gracious God, today we pray for our Holy Father. This is a difficult time for our church. This is a difficult time for our people. This is a difficult time for our country. This is a difficult time for our world. It does appear that the Prince of Darkness is encircling every area of our lives. We feel like we are under siege, O oh God. 
we need you to reveal your power as you did across history. Help us, O Lord, to break the chains and the bonds of this enemy. And help us, O God, to break and crush the spirit of this enemy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sake. Pray especially for those who are in critical condition, O God. Their lungs may be failing them at this time. We beg you that you who break into the nostrils of Adam, and Adam became a living being, that you would do the same to our loved ones, that they may have life in them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our doctors. We pray for our nurses. We pray for those in the emergency department. We pray for our EMS. We pray and ask, O oh God, for our police, for our military, for our researchers, and for everyone, all those who are volunteering, doing whatever they can do to get into the fight. We pray, O oh God, that you may bless their hard work, that you may bless their efforts with real results, now and very, very soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders of nations. Pray, O oh God. That every leader, wherever they are, may right now lay aside their political ambitions and think about what is, what is best for the healing and health of their people. Just so that whatever decisions are made right now have no political, political consideration or taint of politics in them. But just the care and health and healing of our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your children, O oh God, who are right now stuck in their homes, that you may be the peace between them. Help us, O oh Lord, to temper our frustrations, to temper our own anxieties, to temper our, our, our intolerance, just so we do not allow the devil to win in our homes. We beg, O oh God, for, ex for those who live alone, sinners who live alone, may they feel your presence and your peace every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. There is none like Jesus, there was none, and there will be none, his glory, like honor stands while it is his right hand stands for those, who have him as Lord and King, he is their great umbrella in rainy days. He is there, always there, to answer when we call him, and sometimes we do not call him, but he saves. Oh, bless him, adore him, river him, glorify him. For there's no other friend like Jesus. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray my, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray.
we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. We beg, O God, that through the sacrifice, your sick children may be redeemed and may be healed and may be restored to fullness of health. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your work through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Wherever you are, and are worshipping the Lord right now, raise your hearts and look to him as he promised. Whoever is beaten and looks up and beholds this body shall live. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Empty your sufferings, your fears, your pain, that of your family or your loved ones or people you know, into this cup of the Lord's suffering. And in return, you will gain the nourishment from the fountain of salvation. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy Broglio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, O oh God, all your children who have died around the world from this disease, and all who are dying from other, from other diseases, O oh God. May they find your peace. And for those who are struggling, 
may they find your grace for healing. And for those who care for them, may they find your grace of comfort. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the life of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us with hearts lifted pray to God together in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Deliver us from the effect of this disease, O God. Deliver us, we beg you, from everything that endangers our lives at this time. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And wherever you are, May the peace of God find you. May the peace of God be with you and in your home. And may the peace of God abide with you. From me to you, peace. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, manifest us. My sisters and brothers, look up. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, our bread of life, the healer of our souls and our bodies, the rock of ages, the protection of his people. He takes away the sins and the suffering of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul and the world will be healed. For all of us who are unable, wherever we are at this time, to receive the Eucharist of Jesus Christ, let us lift our hearts and invite the spiritual communion. Most merciful and compassionate God, you nourish your people in ways they could never imagine. Right now, when we are unable to participate in the Eucharist physically, we ask, oh God, wherever they are and are looking to you, raised up and exalted, that their hearts and their homes and their families and people they lift up to you may feel the effects spiritually of this communion. May you minister to their needs, oh God. And may they feel your presence around them every day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach this heavenly gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to apologize. We were unable to stream, to live stream on the Christian Mass today. Um, last night, rules changed in our area, so um, things did not go as planned um, today. So, um, but the bishop prayed for every one of you, and he's asking that we pray for each other and that we keep our faith. The archbishop was, you know, he, he feels the struggles of all our service men and women and their families at this time. And he sends his love, his prayers, and his greetings to every one of you. For our closing hymn, we will sing Abide with me. We will sing the song Abide with me. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say the prayer to St. Michael, the age Archangel. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, please help us cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl through the world seeking the wings of God's children. Abide with me, fast for the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When all the hell past fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me not a not a grief i beg a passing word but as thou dwellst with thy disciples lord familiar condescending patient free Come not to sojourn, but abide with.